Hi, she is a 70-year-old lady who has a dense brown cataract which is approximately grade 4 nuclear sclerosis. But the interesting part here is that uh, the eyeball is extremely long. So she has pathological myopia and this is the biometry reading. The intraocular lens power estimated is almost 0. So we're dealing with a long eye and the challenges are we are going to work under a very deep anterior chamber the visualization might be a little bit of an issue apart from that we expect lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome these are the things which are very specific to myopia of course this patient in addition has a slightly denser cataract and let's see how things turn out the surgery is being done under topical anesthesia the two side ports are made Intracameral lignocaine is introduced into the eye followed by trypan blue to stain the anterior capsule. Dispersive OVD is placed into the eye to pressurize the anterior chamber and the 2.8 mm triplanar incision is created. Getting the rexus right is extremely critical in these eyes because here we have an extremely well dilated pupil and you also have a large bag So getting the right sized and well centered rexus is extremely critical because that ensures better centration of the intraocular lens in the post operative period. I'm going to use forceps to perform the rexus. The flap is raised and as I'm tearing it I'm noting that the zonular health is quite good. The tearing is quite easy and now i have a rexus which is about 5 mm in size and looks to be fairly well centered these eyes with dense nuclear cataract we need to be very mindful that the capsule will be very thin in these so when you're doing hydrodissection we need to use very little amount of fluid not to build up any pressure and then just tap the lens and release the fluid and if required we can do multi quadrant hydrodissection using very small amount of fluid The nucleus is rotated just to ensure that the corticocapsular adhesions are taken care of and the nucleus is well and truly mobile. Time to emulsify the nucleus. This is an eye with pathological myopia. These have typically a lower scleral rigidity and there is a risk of the lens iris uh, retropulsion syndrome. To prevent this before starting the infusion, I go in with my dialer and lift up the iris and then the infusion is started. This small maneuver is going to minimize the sudden deepening of the chamber because of uh, the iris folding back and causing something like a, a reverse pupillary block so the bottle height is also taken care of the bottle height is kept slightly low as we enter the eye so these two maneuvers like lowering the bottle height and lifting up the iris before starting the infusion helps us to prevent this sudden deepening of the chamber and as we enter these pathological myopic eyes the overlying superficial epinucleus and cortex is aspirated time to change the settings to the scalp mode my strategy is to create a small central pit before going on to chop the nucleus so for trenching i'm going to use continuous torsional power with very low vacuum and a very low flow rate once i've reached about 60% depth i'm going to change the settings to the chop mode the tip is buried using just the longitudinal energy so that it gives me a firmer grip i'm using a sharp vertical chopper the chopper goes down and then laterally separates As we can expect this is a dense nucleus separation in a single stroke is not possible so a couple of more attempts of regripping and lateral separation maneuvers are required to separate the posterior plate the nucleus is then rotated the next part of the hemineucleus is engaged and vertical chop maneuver is being performed so we have one free fragment there now the tip is buried again in the nuclear fragment is pulled up a little bit and then the vertical chop maneuver is being done so a couple of uh, lateral separation maneuvers ensures that the majority of the fragment is free the fragment is then pulled out of the bag into the anterior chamber above the level of the rexus margin and then it is being emulsified in a controlled manner the emulsification will be done using the setting which is different again we'll be using switching back to the torsional mode because it has a better cutting efficiency 
and once the two fragments are taken care of time to go ahead and divide the heminucleus using the chop mode at this point we can see that the posterior plate is not cracking it is holding these two adjacent pieces together now because we have got enough space in the capsule bag what i'm doing is i'm flipping the nucleus so that the posterior plate is turned anteriorly and i'm going to phaco these adhesion area itself so i'm directly phacoing the posterior plate so that the posterior plate adhesions which was holding these two fragments together is a fake code so we have these two fragments free and to be emulsified individually so ovid is again replaced back to ensure that the endothelium is adequately protected and then the phaco is reintroduced and each of these fragments is then slowly and steadily emulsified in a very controlled manner so the last fragment is remaining and it is emulsified quite easily so the nucleus emulsification part is done and over time to deal with the cortex the pupil is very well dilated and the visualization is great so cortex aspiration is not difficult at all it's a pleasure to aspire the cortex when we can see things so clearly posterior capsule has certain lens fibers attached to it i'm just trying to go in and blow the posterior capsule uh, using the bhs it takes about a minute or so to clean up the posterior capsule and now is the time to put in the lens before putting in the lens i'm going to place in a ctr Now this is a bag which is quite large and being a pathological myopia we expect the bag to be quite large so in these eyes i usually prefer to place in a ctr and the ctr is the bigger version uh, that is 11 to 13 mm sized ctr is the one which is being introduced the goal is to ensure that we have an equatorial stretch that pushes the posterior capsule up against the optic of the lens and it adheres well So in my experience I believe that this ensures a better a long term centration of these lenses this is required only because the bag in these eyes is quite large most the conventional lenses which we have are predominantly designed for the average sized bags so whenever we have these large bag size I would still I would prefer to have a larger CTR in C2 along with the lens Now time to remove the OVD OVD both in front and behind the lens is being irrigated out uh, the side ports are hydrated uh, that's it the case is done uh, this is the first day post op picture the patient had an uncorrected visual acuity of 612 and she was uh, delighted we'll take her to the terigium at a later date if it progresses otherwise we're just going to leave it as it is To summarize, pathological myopia can be a challenge uh, to perform cataract surgery, but these are some of the concerns which we are uh, worried about like the visualization is compromised because of a very deep chamber and we're going to deal with an extremely large bag centering the dexis is going to be an issue and of course the lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. Uh, but if we plan it adequately well all these things can be sorted out and the intraoperative procedure would be very uneventful and with excellent outcome so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful